Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Habita fillah, due to the immense immersion of people in major affairs such as the issue of takfir or tafsiq or tabdi' of declaring people to be disbelievers, declaring people to be uh, wicked sinners and declaring people to be innovators in the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. I just thought it would be uh, from the fawa'id, from the benefits, to read a, uh, something that I just came across from one of our ulama of Ahl sunnah rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatin wasiya, Sheikh Zayd al-Madkhali, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatin wasiya. And this is in his book, it's called a shuruq ala furuq And this is just in the introduction, and he's explaining why he wrote the book. And he mentions, because there is a lot of disagreement between the people about the issue of takfir and tafsiq with tibdir, you know, of declaring people to be innovators, declaring to people to be disbelievers, declaring people to be a wicked sinners. There's so much disagreement in that the people have broken into basically you could say three uh, people into three categories. He breaks people into three categories as is uh, prevalent from the Nasus and from the Medhab of the Salaf that you see there is uh, Ahla Ifrat wa Ahla Tafrit wa Ahla Wasat. There is those people who are extreme and then there's those people who are extreme to another extent in which they don't at all, uh, they totally ignore and avoid these principles, meaning, and these are people of knowledge, obviously, because the lay person shouldn't be involved in declaring people to be innovators and disbelievers. You know, this takes knowledge, it takes ilm, wa fiqh fi deen. And knowing the kawai, the shirut wa mu'ana, knowing the principles, the criterion, uh, the conditions, and those things which prohibit from making takfir. So these are knowledge-based issues. And these are issues the layperson, as we've mentioned countless times from our ulama, we translated many things, but the people will not cease to be on falsehood and engage in falsehood and destroying the honor of one another and destroying the honor of the students of knowledge and the ulama. And in fact, these things should be left to those people of knowledge. So here the Shaykh <coughs> is mentioning some, some great fawai, and we'll just read this and quickly translate, and then we'll leave it at that. So he says that, he says, uh, one of the reasons he wrote this, he says, وَجُودْ كَثْرَةَ نِزَاءَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي قَدَائِتَ تَكْفِيرُ وَتَفْسِيقُ وَتَبْدِيعُ وَلَا شَكْ أَنَّ مِنْهُمْ الْمُحَقَّقْ so he said, due to the fact that there are so many people who are involved in these uh, and have differences over the issue of declaring people as in, uh, disbelievers and declaring the people to be wicked sinners and declaring people to be um, uh, innovators, that there is no doubt from amongst them, there are those who are truthful or, you know, who are on the truth and, you know, they have knowledge and they're making those principles, uh, using those those principles, those kawaid and those usul to do that. And then there are those who are on falsehood. And then he says, فَصَارَ وَسَطٍ بَيْنَ أَسْحَابَ ضَلَالَتَيْنِ فِي قَضَايَا الْمَذْكُورَةِ إِذْ أَحْلَ الضَّلَالَ الْأُولَى هُمَ الْغُلَاتِ أَحْلَ تَشَدِّدْ وَالتَّنَطُّعْ فِي إِطْلَاقْ لَفْضُ الْكُفْرِ وَالْفِسْقِ وَالْبِدْعَ عَلَى غَيْرِ بِدُونِ وَزِنْ لَمَّا يُقُولُونَ بِمَيْزَانَ الشَّرْعَ الشَّرِيفِ وَفَهِمْ السَّلَفِ Al Hasif. So he mentions that the Mahakakun, those people who are on the truth, and they're they're doing this correctly, that they're Ahl Sunati wal Jama'ah. And they are those who have been guided to the truth and to the path, to the straight path. And they continue to be in the middle between the two paths of Dalal, the two paths of misguidance. 
uh, regarding these issues. And he said, and the first group of the people that are misguided are the people who are extreme, those people who are severe, and those people who are uh, basically extremists in declaring other, uh, in, in, in using the term kofr and fisk and bida regarding other people without any scale which is in accordance with the scale of the Sharia and the understanding, a uh, Salafi understanding. In this, the understanding of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in wa tabi'in wa tabi'a tabi'in. They don't, they don't use that as their, their foundation. Look at how many people of Dala, like Faisal Jamaiki and, and Abu Hamza and Abu Qatad and, the, and Chaudhry and just, we could just name countless people and there will be people after that. After these people are put in their graves, there'll be other uh, people of Bid'ah who are still on the same tech fear and the same foolishness, declaring people to be innovators and disbelievers, not based on the book and the sunnah and the understanding of the salaf, not based on quiet and fiqh, because it's not just those nasus. You don't just take an ayat and run and make an application. Allah said, now you're this. That's not how these principles, that's not how the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the classical scholars up until now, that's not how they operated. They had principles, they had fiqh, they look at the, the masali and the mufasid, they look at the muwana, they look at the things that prohibit from making takfir, they look at the masali, the, 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 the benefits and the harms, they, they, they had these principles, they had these kuwa'id, they had the usul, whereas you see the latter people, and even the mutaqaddimin from the khawarij didn't have this. And likewise, what's a, a fayda here is we see Imam uh, Zaid, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatul wasiya, is mentioned that this is an issue of people also declaring tafsik and, and, and tabdir. So we see a group of people, and it won't cease, they're going to continue to do this, uh, making, uh, declaring other people to be innovators with ease, without using any usul in principles. A lot of times their usul is usul hizbiyah. It's in a foundation which is based on a partisanship. Just that they disagree with you. Or they don't like one of the mashayikh that you like. Or they don't feel you're making ta'asab and in, in, in blindly following their view. Or their scholar. Or their group of scholars in the way that they are. They, they, it's just sometimes it's, and it's, sometimes it's, it's issues shakhsiyan. You know, it's personal issues. You went to a movie theater. You're a hizbi. You did this, Hizbi. You, uh, you know, you sat with this one, Hizbi. We saw a selfie with you doing this, Hizbi. You know, it's 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 there's no uh, principles to it. There's no thick to it. And this is 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 a, a a very shameful practice that we have to run from. We have to run from Hizbiya in all of its forms. We have to run from being uh, like the Khawarij in all of the forms of Tikfir and other wickedness that this kind of facade spreads throughout the earth and spreads and causes division between the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِعَبْلِ اللَّهِ جِمِعًا وَلَا تَفَرَقُوا Adhere all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide but we're continually dividing then the Shaykh he mentions and so we'll, for the sake of time we're not going to read the Arabic he also mentions the second group of misguided people he said that these are the people of uh, you know, as some of the people use the term uh, mumayya, that these are the people who throw away the kuwaid and usul and, and principles. Like, for example, we have some very famous du'at who used to be Salafi. And you see that now the, the statements they're making and the principles that they are propagating are like almost on the bab of kufr, some of the things. Are, and they open up the path of zandaka to the youth. And subhanAllah, it's, it's, it's shame and crim criminal because these people have status with the people. These people also learn people who have knowledge, but yet they throw away the whole kawaid of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. I listened to one of them, one of the heads of this, uh, this ideology, just mentioning, you know, that what the Salaf and what the people before us built as a foundation that that almost needs to be torn down and that we, 
you know, make new applicable principles for this time. No, that's not. Instead, rather, we use those principles and those kawaii and those usul to understand and practice and implement Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen in all circumstances and all situations and throughout all time. That doesn't mean fatawa don't change. That's not what we're saying. That doesn't mean we don't need fiqh and that doesn't mean we don't need ijtihad. That's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is that the creed doesn't, doesn't change. And those usul do not change. We need those foundation principles in order to practice and to keep us reined in because you've seen some of these individuals, they go so far, they spend their time totally dismantling the madhab of the salaf. It's not about calling yourself salafi and this, but they are destroying with their new afkar. And they're just a step away from these other people who've totally abandoned the sunnah and who, who say that they believe in the Quran and leave the sunnah. Or they say that they believe in the Quran and the Sunnah, but it's according to their understanding, their fahm, their ideology. And this is from the usul of Ahl Bid'ah, that they, instead of taking the book and the Sunnah and the understanding the Salaf and making and having your creed and your practice in accordance with that, they take what they understand from the book what they understand from the sunnah, if they feel like it, and what they understand from their, their context and their ideology. We're not saying not to contextualize, but we're saying that you don't cut out the method of the salaf because that is, that's, your, that's the whole foundation. That's the foundation of the deen. You're going to destroy everything that these people did. And then now your ideology, your, your way of approaching contemporary problems and issues is the right way. Rather, look back to that. As Imam Malik said, La Yurf. Or Imam Malik, he said that La Yaslah, Akhra hadhi umma illa bima salaha awalaha, o kama qal. He said, which means that what, that things won't be rectified. The, the, uh, except by returning back to what rectified the first uh, generations, the, the, the first part of this ummah. They were rectified. They had issues. They had social issues in the context of their society, but it was Tawheed and it was Sunnah that rectified them. And after and they and the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Umar, the heads of the Salaf. So how they understood the deen. And then the Tabi'een with Tabi'a Tabi'een. That is that foundation. We can't abandon that. We can't abandon it for our desires and for a, uh, a new uh, scholastic understanding. Because a scholastic understanding means nothing if it's not in, in context and not related to what they understood. So then the Shaykh, he mentions that, there are that there's that group that they're not on Basira, and they're not on Fiqh, and they're not on the correct path. And he said, وَكَانَ أَهْلَ hadith wal أَثَرْ wasata." أَيْ so he said that Ahlus, uh, Ahla Hadith and Ahla Athar, that they were not extreme in either of those poles. You know, they were not too extreme and just, you know, immersing in the issue of takfir without those kawaid and asul and fiqh to do so. And they were not the ones who threw away the principles of the religion and just made a new maslaha not based on any usul. They were wasat, they were in the middle. And that's the path we want to be. Then the Shaykh, he mentions the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we'll end there, which is, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهنين للحق حق تيأتوهم أمر الله وهم على ذلك. He said, there won't cease to be a group from my nation that continues to be on the truth. Uh, and then in another nation, narration, لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم. No one will 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 harm them who differs with them nor those who uh try to deceive them or disagree with them until the hour is established so if you traverse on that path no matter how few you are but you're adhering to those principles you're adhering to the book in the sunnah to the best of your ability and the madhab of the salaf to the best of your ability and understanding and seeking the counsel of ahl al-ilm then you're on khair azim no matter even if 
most of the people around you are on something else and they're really influenced and they love what uh, this one is calling to and they love the Sufi Medhab and where you don't and they love new Muslim organizations where you can mix and listen and dance and 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 do all this kind of craziness and they love you know the new Muslim homosexual student union and the new Muslim bisexual student union and the new Muslim Hizbah whatever and the and the the Hizbah Takfir and the Hizbah as Imam Mukbil bin Hadi Al Wadi Allah Yahramu said Hizbah Burtakal you know the Hizb the, the new Hizb or group of oranges, meaning that the people break into so many groups of sex, you never know what they're going to do. We're going to have a Hizbah napkin pretty soon. Wallahu musta'an, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect, was for myself, the shaitan, was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Muhammad.